like to open this talk with a show of hands. Raise your hand if you don't like driving. That's a couple of us. Raise your hand if you care about the environment. Yeah, that's more of us. And now raise both hands if you think it's important to save human lives. All right, yeah, I'm hoping that's all of us. <laughs> Today I'm here to tell you about a silver bullet that can save lives, protect the environment, and improve your daily commute. This silver bullet is the self-driving car. Self-driving will be central to one of the greatest revolutions in transportation. It will change the way we commute, it will change the way we define our cities, and it will change the way that view, we view private vehicle ownership. Self-driving is poised to bring immense social benefit, and we should support the growth of this technology as much as we can. At the same time, we must manage the risks as we transition into the self-driving revolution. Let's begin by defining what self-driving is. Self-driving, as the name suggests, is a vehicle that drives itself. But there are varying degrees to which this is possible. The Society of Automotive Engineers defines five levels of autonomy, with each building upon the previous. The first three levels of autonomy have already been achieved. At level one, the car is able to provide basic driver assistance. Think Jaguar Land Rover's off-road cruise control. At level two, the car can provide more complex maneuvers, such as steering and acceleration without a human. But the human must still sit behind the wheel. So an example would be Tesla's autopilot. At level three, the car can make more complex decisions, such as passing a slower vehicle. And a human is only needed in certain situations, such as in emergency situations. Audi's A8 is the first vehicle in production to have achieved level three autonomy. So what's on the horizon? At level four, human intervention is basically not required. The car can make all decisions for itself. And at level five, not only is human intervention not required, it's actually not possible. There's no steering wheel, there's no pedals, no brakes in the car. You are completely at the mercy of the car. When I talk about self-driving, I'm referring to cars that have level four and level five autonomy, those in which you can fall asleep behind the wheel without any consequence. Now this may seem like a far-fetched idea, but in reality, it's not. In fact, Ford plans to roll out cars with level four autonomy by 2021. That's only three years from now. And Alphabet's Waymo subsidiary is already working on cars that will have level five autonomy. So why the rush to develop self-driving? Why does it matter? To understand this, we need to look at self-driving as one piece of the larger mobility puzzle. There are several trends in the automotive industry that are affecting how this industry moves forward. And self-driving is critical because it amplifies the impacts of each of these trends. So the first trend is that of electrification. Through companies like Tesla, electric vehicles have entered the market at a very small scale. And electric vehicles will become more prominent as consumer attitudes become more positive, batteries become cheaper, and charging infrastructure becomes more well-established. Why does self-driving matter? It matters because most self-driving cars will also be electric cars. And the reason behind this is that electric vehicles are easier for the computer to control, easier to maintain, and it's also easier for the car to charge itself than to fuel itself. The second major trend that's redefining the automotive industry is that of ride sharing. Through companies like Uber, Lyft, Cartago, we've began to challenge the assumption that private vehicle ownership is necessary in society. And this paradigm will continue to shift as these services expand in scale, convenience, and cost effectiveness. Why is this relevant to self-driving? It's relevant because self-driving and ride sharing go hand in hand. If we think about a company like Uber, if they're able to provide a fleet of self-driving cars, that completely redefines their business model. They no longer need to hire drivers, and therefore they can put more cars on the road, providing more accessible and convenient service, and also they can have cars that run 24-7, whereas a human driver can only, they, they have to sleep. In fact, Ford's plan to roll out cars with level four autonomy by 2021 is in conjunction with Lyft, so it's clear that the two play with each other. The third major trend that's disrupting automotive industry is that of connectivity. A connected car is a car that collects a massive quantity of data. So 
where it's, uh, where it's at, how it's being used, who's in the car. Think about it as a smartphone on wheels. Why is this relevant to self-driving? It's relevant because self-driving cars also collect enormous amounts of data. And at the confluence of self-driving and connectivity are cars that can communicate with one another. For instance, they can move in unison to prevent a collision, and they can signal each other to reduce congestion. So self-driving is important because it amplifies the effects of electrification, ride-sharing, and connectivity. So in essence, we can call it the fourth major trend that will affect transportation. But self-driving is also important because of immense social benefits that it brings. Let's go back to that silver bullet, the silver bullet of self-driving. And I told you that this silver bullet could improve your daily commute. This is quite intuitive because the time that you currently spend behind the wheel can now be spent reading a book, uh, working, or taking a break. I also told you that this silver bullet will save lives. How? Every year, 1.3 million people die in car accidents. That's over 3,000 people a day. And in 2015, car accidents were the 10th leading cause of death in the world. A study by McKinsey and Company has found that self-driving cars have the potential to be 90% safer than human drivers because they have better sensory abilities, better reaction times, and better judgment. For instance, they're not going to drive intoxicated. And so self-driving cars, therefore, have the potential to save human lives. And for that very reason, we have a moral imperative to support this industry. Further, I told you that this silver bullet could protect the environment. The Eno Center for Transportation has found that self-driving cars will be between 23 and 39% uh, more fuel efficient than the conventional vehicle. The reason behind this is twofold. At the level of the individual vehicle, the car can adjust its speed in order to reduce instances of braking, thereby improving fuel economy. But at a larger scale, when cars can talk with one another, they can signal each other to smooth traffic flows, reduce congestion, and therefore prevent stop and go traffic. But further, self-driving cars will benefit the environment because they can reduce the amount of parking space that's needed. Imagine a scenario where the car drops you off at work, then goes and parks itself. In this case, it can park snugly beside an adjacent self-driving vehicle without any need for open door space in between because the passengers aren't getting on and off at the parking lot. And because of that, self-driving can actually save 15% of parking space, and that can begin to redefine how we build our urban centers. What I didn't tell you is that this silver bullet can revolutionize industry. Already, industries like mining and farming have adopted autonomous vehicle technology. And that's because these industries typically rely on public roads, and the paths of travel are fairly restricted and geofenced. For instance, Rio Tinto already has a fleet of self-driving haul trucks in its Australian mines. But there's more on the horizon. The next industries that will likely see the self-driving revolution are those of construction and warehousing, in which excavators, forklifts, and loaders are likely to be automated. And perhaps the largest industry on public roads that will be automated is that of uh, trucking. The semi-truck is more easy to automate because it runs mostly on highways, which are free of pedestrians, have fewer traffic signals, and fewer traffic signs. But further, the self-driving revolution won't just be felt by industries that have vehicles. It'll also be felt by other industries that are based on robotics. For instance, humanoid robotics, they share a lot of the common technologies with self-driving, such as GPS, remote sensing, and image recognition. And they also share much of the common infrastructure such as charging stations, machine-to-machine -machine communication networks, and service centers. As a result, as self-driving continues to accelerate, it will continue to spur growth in other robotics-based industries, bringing an entire revolution in all facets of technology. Now, the problem with the silver bullet is that it's still a bullet, and therefore it has the potential to do harm. As we move into the self-driving revolution, there are several issues that we need to manage. The first is that of ethics. In programming a self-driving car, we face the classic trolley problem. In the case of an emergency, should the car value the lives of the passengers in the vehicle more, or value the lives of the pedestrians on the road more? And there's no simple answer to that. A second issue is that of cybersecurity. The self-driving cars need to be very secure, because if they get hacked, 
They could be used very maliciously. And the third issue is that of jobs. In the US alone, 3.5 million people are employed in trucking. And in a world of self-driving, we need to think long and hard about how we transition these people into new roles as their traditional jobs become automated. But let's dial the clock back by a century and let's think about the time when the horse-drawn carriage was being replaced with this shiny new object called the car. The car faced immense initial resistance because it was very expensive, because the roads were simply not sufficient. They needed significant upgrades to support the car. And because the horse had become the backbone of many households. And yet society rallied to overcome these challenges because it dared to dream about a world without the horse-drawn carriage. And today, we dare to dream about a world where cars can drive themselves. When engineers, policymakers, and the general public come together and collectively decide on the best path forward, the problems with self-driving tomorrow will be no more relevant than the horse-drawn carriages today. Self-driving will continue to accelerate, fueled by growth in electrification, ride-sharing, and connectivity, and fueled by the desire to save lives, save the environment, and to save your time. Imagine a world where your commute consisted of reading a book, watching a movie, or squeezing in that extra hour of sleep in the mornings. Imagine a world where your grandparents could travel where they wanted to, when they wanted to, because they weren't constrained by the fact that they can't drive. And imagine a world where you never had to worry again about whether your friend would make it home safely after a night at the bar. Now stop imagining. This is the world of self-driving. Thank you.